That's all, Milsha of IDBI. Uh, now let's uh, continue really to keep the focus on uh, the currency front, uh, but specifically IOC is a company in focus, a strong first quarter coming in for the company. We saw a profit jump, in fact, of over 50%. Sales as well saw an uptick about 17%. But the question is, uh, will the weak rupee that we've been seeing have a positive impact on the company going forward? Uh, well, we have Sanjeev Singh, the chairman of the company, joining in now with more perspective. Uh, Mr. Singh, thanks very much uh, for joining us here on Business Television India. First off, let me ask you about uh, your first quarter gone by. Clearly a very strong set of numbers, a 50% jump coming in uh, as far as uh, the, the profit figure goes. Take us through what factored in here. In the first quarter we had uh, over 6,800 crores uh, as in the pact, which was predominantly supported by the inventory gains which we had in the quarter. Of course, uh, there were some negatives also which were overcome by this inventory gain and the good performance of the refineries. Uh, one uh, major impact, uh, negative impact was towards the rupee depreciation or because of the forex uh, change which was equivalent to close to 1800. Uh, inventory gain was not the only reason for uh, good performance. Uh, the excellent physical performance of the refineries was uh, one, uh, another major reasons for uh, good, perform good financial performance. The refineries as a whole did more than 102% of the capacity utilization with the minimum uh, specific energy consumption and the highest distillate production in this particular quarter. All right, so clearly, uh, you know, operationally things are looking quite strong. Your margin also saw uh, quite an expansion, uh, currently at 8.4%. That's versus a comparable figure of about 6.5%. How sustainable are these margin numbers? What really is the ballpark figure that you are looking at as far as margins go going into the end of the fiscal? If, if you talk about the gross, gross refinery margin, of course, the excellent performance was a major contributor. But uh, in terms of the cracks between gasoline in the crude or the diesel in the crude, uh, they were not uh, they are not very high or they are not very strong. So, uh, so looking uh, comparing with the present uh, quarter's performance, we expect at least the GRMs to continue at the same level or at least be better than this. All right, let me uh, then, you know, just to help us understand uh, the sort of impact that we see as far as uh, the currency moves go, uh, there has been the sharp depreciation uh, in the INR versus the US dollar. This definitely increases the cost of crude procurement for a company like yours through which uh, should, uh, you know, get eventually passed through to the form of pump retail fuel prices. What is the sort of intermediate impact uh, from the depreciation that we've seen in the currency been on your working capital and crude inventory? As, as I told earlier, we had the impact of uh, close to 1,800 uh, crores in the quarter because of the forex or the rupee de uh, devaluation. Our working capital becomes expensive. We have substantial amount of foreign loans which also become expensive. And uh, today if we consider the foreign loan interest rate uh, coupled with the quarterly depreciation of the rupee, uh, the effective loan rate uh, comes to close to 20%. But uh, in spite of that, uh, we expect that uh, we should be able to overcome because we don't foresee that uh, rupee will devalue further uh, in a big way. And uh, today, in spite of all this depreciation, we are, uh, we are able to do well. And uh, the way it, the pricing is worked out, uh, any such impact is invariably it gets passed on to the retail prices. All right, so then if I can ask you, yes, you know, you spoke to us about the 1,800 uh, crore uh, forex loss in the first quarter. Looking ahead from here, what is the sort of quantum of fuel price increase, any sort of a ballpark figure that you can share with us in order to sort of offset the currency depreciation? You see, we, we don't change the prices to uh, offset the forex depreciation. The way the prices, the retail prices worked out, it is based on the last 15 days average of the product prices, that is petrol and diesel, in the global market. Because the global market, uh, we take the prices which is in foreign currency. So uh, apart from the variation of the prices in the foreign market, uh, the rupee or the rupee dollar rate is also impacting the retail prices, what we are working out. We don't intend to pass on any depreciation uh, immediately to the retail. But uh, that's how the prices are worked out. And uh, let me share with you, roughly one, rup uh, one rupee per dollar depreciation leads to nearly, it has an impact of close to 500 crores, which gets passed on to all the products. It's not that it gets passed on only to petrol and diesel, it gets passed on to all the products. All right, fair enough. Uh, point taken there. Uh, you know, also if you could just share with us, what is the range of gross marketing margin that you would like to maintain? If we talk about both petrol and diesel, would, it, uh, would you prefer it to be between the 3.5 to 4 uh, rupee per litre range? 
again, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the company's performance, the marketing margin typically had been steady, close to 4,200, 4,300 crores every quarter. And uh, the way we work it out, it's uh, per litre basis, it's uh, sort of uh, a fixed marketing margin which grows along with the volume of the business and uh, it's not a cost plus model on which we work. So marketing margin are stable and they are fairly in the same range and we expect them to be in the same range in the coming quarter also. Alright, fair enough. And just a word on the pet chem side of things, you know, this time we saw a drop of about 10% uh, as far as the pet chem EBITDA goes. What uh, didn't work for your company this time around? Because we did see, you know, a huge increase reported by a peer as far as pet chem EBITDA goes. How do you expect this segment to be shaping up uh, going ahead from here? Uh, if we talk about Q2, for example, with the higher pet chem price and uh, if we add to that the currency depreciation as well. Now the pet care business or the re revenue from the pet care business heavily depend upon the volumes what we do as well as the margins between the product and the feedstock. Uh, we operate our pet care business is highly integrated with the operating refineries. Uh, this particular quarter our volumes were a little more than the earlier quarter and uh, it's only the differential in pricing and the pet care business also the domestic prices are uh, strongly governed by the global prices. So. Uh, they, are, they are more or less uh, floating in tandem with the global prices. So depending upon the margin, uh, the revenues do come. They are marginally, very marginally lower than the uh, quarter compared to the previous year. And uh, that's how it is. In terms of volume, we did better. In terms of efficiency, we are doing good. So there is no reason, uh, at least for concern at the immediate moment, as far as the pet chem business is concerned for us. All right, fair enough. We leave it at that. No reason for concern as far as the pet chem side of things goes. Strong first quarter coming in from IOC. That's the chairman of the company, Sanjeev Singh, uh, really helping us understand the fine print of the quarter gone by, as well as how uh, the currency depreciation has an impact on the performance of a company like an IOC. In fact, keeping uh, the focus on the rupee, then uh, we've seen, of course, a depreciation of over 8% against the dollar. In